Hi, I'm Jeffrey, and welcome back to Nightfalls. Join me around the campfire at the foot of these mystical falls for a podcast of bedtime stories designed to help you sleep. Each week, we'll begin with a brief meditation before settling into our story for the evening. And don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. I want you to drift off whenever you're ready. Come, join me beside the fire and let me tell you of the time my good friend Gilly made an escape to the quaint little cottage her parents own in the rolling countryside of Northumberland. Before we join Gilly on her escape to the countryside, Let's take a moment to ourselves, to wind down and escape the rush and chaos of the waking world. This is your time. It's a moment carved out just for you to indulge in the rest and relaxation you deserve. Just as Gilly finds tonight, there is much peace to be found in a moment alone to reconnect with your authentic self. Take a deep breath in. Draw peace, calmness, and kindness into your body. Exhaling, let go of all of the faces that filled your thoughts and took up your time today. Inhaling once more, welcome stillness and silence into your body. Exhaling, let go of any of the places you passed through or visited today. There is only you, present in this moment. Your mind is clear. Your thoughts are free of any sense of obligation. And your body is free of tension. All there is for you to do is Simply lie here relaxing. Now, if you're feeling ready, let's join Gilly on her journey into relaxation. Gilly plonked herself down on the plush navy blue sofa and let out a big sigh. What a day. She had spent four hours on the road, driving along motorways and winding around country roads to make it to Northumberland. Her parents' cottage was off the beaten track, hidden away in the dip between a number of large hills and valleys. There wasn't a neighbour for miles. Gilly had been desperate to escape here for months, but her work schedule had been so hectic that she hadn't had any time to make the trip. But finally, here she was, at last. She had only just arrived at the house and there was still the bed to make, the fire to light and her suitcase to unpack. But for now, it could all wait. She wanted to take a moment to be still and just breathe after a long time of feeling restless and rushed off her feet. She laid her head backwards into the sofa cushion and closed her eyes. She took a deep breath in through her nose and sighed out softly. She could finally relax. She could hear the gentle padding of her dog's paws on the floor as they patrolled the house, taking in all the new smells. They would settle soon, once they had explored their new surroundings. It wasn't the first time she had brought Jasper and Tilly to the Northumberland cottage, but they always got excited 
every time they went somewhere out of the ordinary. Jasper and Tilly were Labradors, Jasper a regal black male, and Tilly a sweet-tempered, small, fox-red female. She had adopted Jasper first, five years ago, and her life had immediately become brighter since he came into it. He was full of so much love and energy and made her smile every day. Jasper would greet her with cuddles and kisses to welcome her home, even when she hadn't been gone long. He made her feel appreciated. He would randomly drop balls and toys at her feet when he felt like playing, and that was most of the time. Jasper was a very playful puppy. Gilly could barely keep up with his need for constant attention and mental stimulation, so she decided to find him a friend to keep him company. That's when she found Tilly. Tilly was the runt of a litter, and Gilly fell in love with her straight away. She had beautiful golden fur with a hint of red in it, which made her stand out from the rest. From a distance, you could be forgiven for mistaking her for a fox. Tilly was timider than Jasper, but she was equally as loving. Tilly and Jasper got on like a house on fire from the beginning and were thick as thieves. It was perfect having two dogs. When Gilly didn't have the time or energy to play with them, she could leave them to entertain each other. And when she wanted love and snuggles, she got double the attention from her furry companions. Nothing made her more happy and proud than watching Jasper and Tilly off their leads in the countryside, running around, wild and free. They were friendly, intelligent, well-behaved dogs, and Gilly felt like she had hit the jackpot with them every day. Jasper and Tilly loved coming to the Northumberland cottage for weekends away. It provided everything that they all needed. Peace and quiet, stunning views, lots of open space and long walks through the countryside everywhere they went. This time, Gilly had decided to come away for a week. She needed it after the busyness of life recently. Her parents' cottage in Northumberland had always been dear to her heart, and now, as an adult, she appreciated it even more than she did as a child. The stone cottage hidden deep in the middle of Northumberland National Park was idyllic for a reclusive escape. Her parents had owned the cottage for as long as she could remember. As a child, she and her siblings would join her parents in regular road trips to the Northumberland countryside. They would pile up in the boot of their car and all squeeze in to head up north for weeks away. The cottage used to be an old stable. It had been converted many years ago, but it still had the old cellar downstairs where they stored the coal. Some remains of the old stables were still outside, opposite the main house, still unconverted to this day. Gilly wondered if her parents would ever get around to converting the old stables. She thought they would make a lovely guest house, and her parents could make some extra income by renting it out as a holiday home. But every time Gilly suggested this, they shrugged it off. 
She assumed they didn't want to share their secret reclusive getaway spot with anyone else. And, to be fair, Gilly totally understood why. When she looked out of the doors and windows of the cottage, onto the untouched landscape, it felt as if she was the only person in the world. It was pure tranquility. Why would they want to share it and risk tainting the peaceful solitude they were lucky enough to have found? There weren't many places left in the world that were so unspoiled. Once Gilly had been sat down for a few minutes, the initial adrenaline had worn off and she was beginning to feel the cold as her body acclimatized to the temperature inside the house. Slowly, she pushed herself up off the sofa and moved over to the fireplace. The old log burner was responsible for heating the whole house so it had to be left burning at all times to keep the cottage warm. Gilly loved the old log burner. She thought it added to the simple pleasures of escaping to the country, and it kept the cottage constantly cosy. She sat down on her knees and twisted the handle to the iron log burner door. She opened it up, and began loading the inside up with chunks of black coal from the bucket to her left. There was a pile of large pieces of chopped wood tucked behind the bucket, and she placed two logs on top of the bed of coals. There was a basket full of kindling to the right of the log burner and a pile of old newspapers so she set to work finishing up her preparations. Gilly loved preparing a fire. She felt a sense of capability when she made a fire, and she eagerly anticipated the coziness that would soon be created in the room. She threw a few pieces of kindling into the log burner and scrunched up a handful of pages of newspaper To finish off, she snapped up some fire lighters and scattered them around the inside of the fireplace. Then, when she was ready, she struck a match and lit several different points before shutting the door tight. Gilly sat back on the carpet and watched as the pieces of wood caught fire one by one, and the pages of newspaper blazed with hot orange flames. She could feel the heat radiating out into the room already, and she sat and watched for a few minutes. The heat from the glass of the log burner prickled against her cool skin, and she closed her eyes. She paid attention to the heat moving through her body, starting on her face, then trickling down her neck to her arms and torso, then all the way to her legs and feet. Her body felt renewed, and she noticed her stresses and worries melting away as the newspaper in the fire crumbled away to ashes. Tilly trotted over to Gilly and placed her head on her shoulder affectionately. She too was enjoying the warmth and closed her drowsy eyes in appreciation. Gilly could feel Tilly's body moving with each breath. With every breath in, her body expanded and her furry chin rose a little off Gilly's shoulder. And then... With every exhale, her body released and her body weight leant all the way into Gilly. She trusted her completely to 
carry her weight. Eventually, Jasper pottered over and nudged Gilly's leg for attention. She supposed she should move from the floor at some point. Gilly unpacked her bag of shopping and filled up the fridge with food. She poured out Jasper and Tilly's dinner into their bowls and flicked the kettle on to make herself a cup of something hot. She'd picked up a box of herbal tea bags on her way and had several new flavours to choose from. There was an elderberry and echinacea blend, manuka honey and ginger, peppermint and licorice root, and simple chamomile tea. She chose the peppermint and licorice blend and placed the tea bag in her mug. As she poured the boiled water over the top and left it to brew, the aromas ascended up into the air and flooded her senses. Her airways instantly felt clearer as the peppermint worked its magic and the hint of sweet licorice tempted her enticingly. As soon as Jasper and Tilly had gobbled up their food, they stood still in the kitchen, staring up at Gilly expectantly. She chuckled at their big, pleading eyes for attention and expectant facial expressions. She moved over to the kitchen door and turned the key in the lock. Jasper and Tilly both braced themselves and juddered like Olympic athletes at the starting line of a race. She looked at her animated dogs and counted down for them. One, two, three. On three, she threw open the kitchen door and Jasper and Tilly bolted through it and out into the garden outside. She laughed and watched them race around the large garden, panting with exhilaration. The view from the kitchen door was breathtaking. Gilly's favourite spot in the whole house. She leant against the doorframe and held her mug of herbal tea in her hands feeling the cool breeze brush against her face. She took in the view gratefully as her beloved Labradors chased each other around the garden. The back of the cottage by the kitchen door was a small paved area sporting a few pots of plants and a wooden table with benches. The patio led on to a huge grassy garden, lined by a hedge the whole way around. Past the hedge were fields, fields that stretched for miles. The hills were so tall they looked like green mountains jutting up out of the landscape as far as the eye could see. It was the same sort of view no matter which window you looked out of, or which door you stood at. The cottage was completely surrounded by countryside. The only other life nearby was the sheep in the fields and the fish in the stream. Jasper and Tilly could run about freely, safely kept within the garden so they didn't wander too far. Gilly was sure that if Jasper got the chance, he would dart off across the hills, never to be seen again. She could imagine him joining the wild sheep, rounding them up and following them everywhere, whether they liked it or not. She chuckled at the thought. Jasper and Tilly spent a good ten minutes sniffing every inch of the garden and sticking their heads into the bushes inquisitively. Gilly watched them, contentedly, as she sipped her herbal tea. 
the juxtaposition of the cool air against her skin and the warm liquid moving through her body was a thrilling sensation. Once she had finished her cup of tea, she called the dogs back inside and returned into the warm house to continue unpacking. The fire was roaring now, and it was doing a good job of heating the radiators in the cottage. It was a much toastier temperature than it was when they first arrived, and Gilly finally felt like she could slip off her gilet and comfortably only wear her soft, oversized jumper. As children, she and her two brothers had loved playing in the garden just as much as Jasper and Tilly. They would wake up every morning to the smell of her father cooking bacon sandwiches and her mother brewing fresh coffee. They would all sit down to have breakfast together before they would don their walking boots and set off to explore Northumberland. The Northumberland coastline was beautiful and every town seemed to have its own ancient sites. Her parents were big into history and they would drag Gilly and her brothers to medieval battle sites around majestic, preserved and ruined castles alongside noble manor houses and monasteries. One of their favourite places to visit was the infamous Holy Island, also named Lindisfarne. Gilly had always thought it was a magical place growing up. Lindisfarne was a village based on an island off the coast of Northumberland that was only accessible at certain times of the day. If you weren't careful or paying attention to the Coast Guard's timetable, you could risk finding yourself stuck either on the island or off it for hours at a time as the sea passes over the road at certain times of day. The island was one of the first places that the ancient Vikings visited when they initially came to England's shores hundreds of years ago, and Gilly and her brother used to pretend to be brave Vikings, storming the castle in their games of make-believe. They would climb over the rocks on the beach and hide behind marshy hills to jump out on one another. It was the perfect place to satiate her parents' longing to quench their historical appetite and to appease the playful minds of children. Now that Gilly had grown up, she still enjoyed visiting Lindisfarne. She liked to reflect on her childhood holidays, exploring the area, and now that she was older, she appreciated the place for its historical relevance and picturesque views, just like her parents did. Another of Gilly's favourite places to visit in Northumberland was nearby Bamborough. From Holy Island, you could see Bamborough Castle across the sea, and it had the most amazing stretch of coast to walk along. You have to push your way through sand dunes to reach the long stretch of white sandy beach at Bambra. But it is worth the walk. The beach stretches for miles along the coast. On one side of the beach, Bambra Castle dominates the skyline. And as you look out to sea on the other side, you can spot the Farne Islands across the water. Gilly loved letting Jasper and Tilly off the lead and walking the whole stretch of the beach at sunset. The waves are particularly choppy as the sun sets at the edge of the water and the gushing sound of the energetic waves lulled Gilly into a tranquil state that always set her up perfectly for a relaxing evening. Arguably, 
The best thing about her parents' cottage in Northumberland was its perfect position for stargazing. Being alone in the middle of nowhere meant that there was barely any light pollution from down on the ground, leaving the dark night sky perfectly clear for the stars to shine bright. Gilly would often take Jasper and Tilly out for a late night walk just to admire the star constellations shining bright in the sky. Back where she lived, most of the time you could hardly see any stars in the sky due to the dense population of people and street lights. But here, Gilly was confident this was one of the best places in England to see the entirety of the clear night sky. Gazing out into the pitch black night with just the perfect tantalizing scars in the sky to guide your way, it really reminded Gilly how small we really are in the vastness of the universe. That was what she loved the most about the effect that coming to her parents' cottage in Northumberland had on her. It made her appreciate the simple pleasures in life. It helped her expect less and enjoy more. It forced her to slow down and simply be without any distractions. When she was in Northumberland, she would sit and read books for hours on end. She never read at home. Here, she would wake up early in the morning to enjoy the sunrise without an alarm clock, whereas she would usually struggle to drag herself out of bed on days back home. She gave her beloved dogs more attention here when she would have less time to spare for them during a normal working week. She felt more herself in Northumberland. She could slow down, rest and recharge, and invest time in simple pleasures that brought her immense satisfaction and gratitude. She felt like the most authentic version of herself here. Gilly spent the afternoon unpacking her suitcase and refolding all her clothes to place in her parents' pine chest of drawers. She loved the master bedroom. It had a huge king-size bed in the middle with cream side tables on either side with little lamps on both that cast a subtle cosy glow. There were two floor-to-ceiling windows on either end of the bedroom that looked out of the front of the house and onto the stunning fields and hills that lay beyond. In the morning, the morning sun would trickle in through these windows and light up the room perfectly, allowing Gilly to wake up without the aid of an alarm clock. It was a much kinder way to start her day than with the blaring of an electronic alarm. Once she was unpacked, she laid out the dog bed and made herself some dinner. A comforting vegetarian pasta dish, followed by a rich hot chocolate for dessert. When nine o'clock came around, Gilly made sure that the fire was still burning strong and added extra plinths of kindling to urge the flames to pick up again. She turned off the main lights and left on only a lamp in the far corner of the living room to dimly cast a glow around the living area. She lit a few candles and placed them along the windowsill and in the middle of the dining table. Gilly pulled the wool blanket off the back of the armchair and wrapped it around her shoulders. Hugging herself tight and glancing around the room, she took in the snug scene. 
Jasper and Tilly were snuggled up in their bed, resting their heads on top of one another's bodies and breathing heavily. They were both fast asleep. She could see the rise and fall of their bellies as they inhaled and exhaled, and could even hear Jasper lightly snoring. Gilly turned on the radio and kept the volume at a low level. The smooth sound of an Elvis Presley ballad drifted out into the room, and his crooning voice made Gilly smile. The scene around her was perfect. She laid down across the sofa, plumping up a cushion and placing it behind her head, and resting her feet over the side of the sofa arm. She spread the blanket out across the entirety of her body, so that not a part of her, below her neck, was out of the covers. She wriggled her shoulders from side to side until she found the perfect, comfortable position. Allowing her arms to rest gently by her sides, she closed her eyes and sighed out. Her eyes felt warm and heavy from the day. With her eyes closed, the only thing she could see being darkness, her other senses kicked into overdrive. She could smell the smoky scent of burning firewood and the sweet, sugary smell of the hot chocolate she had made earlier. She could hear the crackling flames in the log burner and the rustling of the wind outside the window. There were the reassuring sounds of her dog's sleepy breathing down by her side and the faint melodies of the radio floating around the space. Her body felt heavy as it released into the sofa cushions, but her muscles felt completely relaxed. She had let go of all control and submitted to the evening. As she took a breath in through her nose, she felt refreshing air journey up through her nostrils and down her nasal passage, all the way down to fill up her lungs. She held her breath and counted to four. One, two, three, four. Then she let go of the breath, slowly and controlled. She did it again, breathing in deeply, holding a count of four. One, two, three, four. And then released the breath. With every release of breath, she felt her body relaxing and loosening even more, her heart slowing down to a steady rhythm and her mind clearing of all thoughts, except for those of the breath. She breathed in, one, two, three, four, and breathed out. She breathed in, one, two, three, four, and breathed out. With every inhale and exhale, she felt herself drifting into a deeper state of relaxation. Here, in her parents' home in Northumberland, it was the only place she could truly let go. She never felt better than she did here, and tonight was no exception. She breathed in, and she breathed out. She breathed in, and she breathed out. The rest of the world faded away.
as Gilly lay there in the cosy cottage in Northumberland, simply being, simply breathing, and soon, simply sleeping. <laughs>